All right, in our call with Rebecca, we continued to build both trust and authority. We asked questions to better understand her goals, we empathized over client projects taking forever, and we even made a promise to not take two years to complete this project. With that in mind, let's get a timer on the board to make sure we're on track. Now, we're going to take what we've learned about our potential client, and in this video, we'll cover three things. We're going to create a scope of work by defining the client needs, then defining the work we're doing to meet those needs, and we'll cover pricing. We'll do this by taking what we covered previously in the course and applying it to this client specifically. But let's start with the first part of our scope of work, client needs. Now, what's the difference between a scope of work and a proposal? Because a lot of people call this part, what we're doing, what we're putting together for Rebecca, a proposal. And that's okay, we can call it whatever we want. The proposal we sent earlier was a document that included the following. This was the format we used for the proposal. What we noticed about how people find their interior design firm, what might happen when they get on their site, and of course, how we recommend helping them. And all of that, that's what started the conversation. But we've learned a lot since then. And at this stage, we can more clearly define our scope, which is what's included and what's not included in the work we're doing. Now, a scope of work isn't a legally binding document. It's something we're sending to Rebecca and her team to outline what services we'd like to offer. So those client needs, how do we establish them? Well, if we combine our initial research for the client proposal, if we combine that with the notes from our phone call, we have a pretty solid understanding here of what the client needs are. And we can organize these into each phase of work. This is what we mentioned on the call with Rebecca. Conversation, content, design and development, and publishing and managing their site. But we're going to do something a little different here. We're going to move the first part, conversation, to the end. We'll come back to that. And that means we're starting with content. And for Rebecca and her team, we're going to build a content strategy, which will not only inform what we'll include in terms of text, but it'll inform the design and the development of the entire site. Now, a lot of clients might not expect a freelance designer to mess with content strategy. And the important thing here is that we're differentiating our strategy by starting with content. Not just because great design is informed by great content, spoiler alert for the next part of this course, it is, but because we checked out their site. And from our research, we know their current site has a bulleted list. It has a list of all the things they work on, but because there's no solid content here, People visiting their site might lack trust and confidence that this firm is an authority in their area. The client needs a new website that communicates trust and authority to get them more clients. That's what Rebecca said was the goal. They want a site that represents them better in all areas so they can potentially bring in more clients through their website. And that's defining the first client need, establishing trust and authority through the content on the site. What's the second? Well, we know the next part of our work is design and development. We know their current site doesn't work well on mobile. We know it's super difficult to use on a phone. Their potential clients should be able to easily browse their site and find the information they're looking for. We also know from talking to Rebecca that their contact form gets a lot of spam. So we wanna make sure we're minimizing that for them. This is another need she defined. And what we're doing here is critical. In our scope of work, in our email to Rebecca, we're going to reiterate what we've learned, not just from research, but from talking to her. And the reason we're doing that is because our recommendations, what we're saying we'll work on with them, those have to come from the needs of the client. They have to come from the questions we asked and from the answers we took notes on. And they have new photos. She said a thousand. Was that hyperbole? Nobody knows, we should probably ask. But those are her firm's needs related to design and development. And what about publishing and managing? Well, from our call, we learned that her firm wants a content management system, a CMS that lets her team log in and make changes to content on their site whenever they want. Finally, let's do the one we moved to the end. Now, conversation might seem like an odd thing to include in a scope of work document, but it's probably the most important thing here. One of Rebecca's last questions was, what if we don't like the site? We already assured her on the call that we'd have regular check-ins, but by asking this question, she showed us this was important to her. This is important to her firm. They want to have the opportunity to provide feedback and ask questions. Okay, so four sections, four categories of needs. Let's turn those into what we're offering in terms of services. This is the next thing we're covering. This is what gets us the written scope of work. And the thing about this section is 
we're basically 95% of the way there. We did most of this just moments ago because we took the time to list out these real needs. Those needs yield pretty obvious opportunities to meet those needs. These are our services. This is the value we're offering to the client. So content that communicates trust and authority, that basically means we're working with her team to devise a content strategy. That includes defining the areas of their site that need content, whether it's written content like biographies of team members or pictures of the work they've done, we'll need to get their logo from them. We'll work with their team to collect those deliverables and devise a content strategy that clearly communicates trust and authority. We'll work through this in the next section of the course, but it's important here that we mention both the needs from their team and that we clearly define how we're planning to meet those needs. Second set of needs, design and development. We'll build a site that not only looks great and matches their branding, but that responds to the screen size, responds to all kinds of devices from desktops and laptops to tablets and phones. We'll build them a contact form with reCAPTCHA validation. What is that? Nobody knows, but it works wonders in reducing spam. And of course, we'll work with them to feature photos of great interior design. Okay, third part, publishing and managing. We'll set up hosting, we'll configure a CMS that lets members of Rebecca's team go in and make changes to text or images or client projects at any time. Finally, conversation. The time you spend communicating with the client, whether you're learning about their firm, answering questions, or listening to feedback, is itself a service. Your time as a freelancer, as someone who has established trust and authority, your time is a service that's just as important as anything else you're offering the client. Whether Hayes Valley Interior Design asked for a call or emailed us, we want to set expectations about what that service, communicating with our client, what it looks like, how it operates. Now, we can set more defined parameters. We can be more specific later on once we get together a contract, but it's really important to reiterate that we're here to answer any questions they might have regarding this project. We can say how we prefer to communicate. We can say that we prefer to do most client communication through email, since it keeps everything in the same place. We can also add that we're more than willing to schedule a phone call to discuss the project. And another great reassurance is response time. We can pick a reasonable time in which we'll aim to respond. We can say we aim to respond to correspondence within one business day. But that's our general scope of work. It's first defining the needs of the client, which we established through our research and through our phone call, and offering the ways we can meet those needs. Finally, pricing. Earlier in the course, we covered different pricing models. For this client, we're going to offer two paths here, a flat rate model and a recurring fee model. We're doing this to demonstrate multiple options, either of which might be a better fit for the client. Option one, flat rate. This one's simple. For the work outlined above, we'll quote a flat rate. Now, any number we put here in this video isn't going to be an accurate representation of what these services might cost, depending on your area and the ever-changing value of your services. So because we like math, let's use a placeholder. $1 million. That's what we'll charge Rebecca and her team. No, $10 million. Okay, that's our flat rate. What about a recurring fee? Well, they might not have that capital right away. So let's give them a more affordable option than $10 million. Two million plus 300,000 per month for 24 months. That's a short-term savings. And as part of this option, we can be on retainer. We can make sure we're available throughout the contract term to make changes to copy, to add additional client projects, photos of their work. We'll want to clearly define this really clearly later on if they choose this route. So we want to spell out exactly what's included and what's not included in a contract. And if we think back to our conversation with Rebecca, we know we also want to include an hourly rate for any work that falls outside of the scope of work we define here. So we'll include an hourly rate for additional work. But that's what we want to send over, just three components in our scope of work document what the client needs are, how we'll address those needs, these are the services we're offering, and the price, how much we're charging for those services. And those are the components we'll want to include in our scope of work.